Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. In this video, I'm going to explain you the remaining part of computing the income from house property. Last video, the basic things I have explained regarding the provisions of how to compute the income from house property. When a person owns the house and let out the house, then the rent received is taxable under that income from house property. Income Tax Act has given elaborate provisions regarding how to compute the income from house property. So if you remember, if you understand the provisions, then easily you can solve the problems. All the problems are based on the provisions. So take it seriously. Watch the video till the end. Now, in this video, I'm going to explain you about uh, the municipal rental value. Actually, the rent, uh, the income tax on house property is based on annual value. Annual value is the earning capability of the property. What is the earning capacity of the property? That is called the annual value. Annual value will be computed by considering four items that is municipal rental value, fair rental value, actual rental value and standard rental value. All these things I am going to explain to you but before that take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board then I will explain every point in detail. Now, first of all, municipal rental value, in short, we call it as MRV. So, MRV means the rental value of the house, which is fixed according to the municipalities or local bodies. Now, according to Indian constitution, the municipalities or local bodies are having the right to collect the tax from the property situated in their jurisdiction. So, Indian constitution has given the right to the municipal authorities to the local bodies to collect the tax on the property which are situated within the jurisdiction. To calculate the tax, the municipal authorities will find out what is the capacity of rent of that property. Because the, cap the capability of rent will differ from area to area. In some areas, the rental value will be more. In other areas, the rental value will be less. So according to the rental value, the tax will be levied by the municipal authorities. So before applying the tax, the municipal authorities will find out what is the rental value, that rental value which is fixed by municipal authorities, local authorities is called MRV. That's it. Next, actual rental value. The actual rent received or receivable from the tenant is called actual rental value. Fair rental value, the rent of similar accommodations in the same locality, in the same street, in the same area, what the other properties are fetching the rent in the same area, that is called fair rental value. Then lastly, standard rental value, the rental value which is fixed by the Rent Control Act, that is called standard rental value. So annual value will be computed by considering these four values, MRV, FRV, ARV and SRV. Now procedure to compute the income from house property for let out houses. We have different types of houses. We cannot, I mean, explain, we cannot be able to, uh, I can, I will not teach all at a time. Only for let out house, I'm going to explain you remaining. I'll discuss while doing the problem. Now let out house, the first step, calculating the expected rental value ERV. Second step, calculating the GAV, gross annual value. Third step, deduct the municipal taxes or local taxes. So from GAV, if you deduct municipal taxes, you will get net annual value, NAV. Then after getting the NAV, deduct the deductions allowed under section 24. Then we will get income from house property. Only these four steps we require to compute the income from house property. Now the format, how to find out the income from house property in a formal format way. Here I have explained you. First of all heading you should write a computation of income from house property for the assessment year. You should write down the assessment year. Then particulars, amount, inner column, outer column. First we will take gross annual value. <clears throat> in working note, we calculate gross annual value by considering all these four. 
municipal rental value, fair rental value, actual rental value, standard rental value. By considering this, we have to calculate GAV. Once we get the GAV, <clears throat> this is the starting point. From gross annual value, deduct the municipal taxes paid by the owner. Deduct. Then we get net annual value. After getting the NAV, net annual value, give the deductions under section 24. So deductions under section 24, only two deductions are there, not more than two. 24A, 24B. The standard deduction under section 24A and interest on loan under section 24B, only two deductions. Take those two deductions in the inner column, take the total and put it in the outer column. Now NAV minus deductions will get income from house property, so simple. Whereas in case of computing income from salary, it was very difficult. So many items were there, but computing the income from house property is much easier. Now one by one, deductions under section 24, two deductions are there. I'll give the explanation regarding these two deductions. The first deduction is standard deduction under section 24A. This is a compulsory deduction which is allowed to every SSC who is having income from let out house. If a person is having income from let out house, then he will get standard deduction under section 24A. It's a compulsory one. Irrespective of the amount spent on earning the income, this compulsory deduction will be allowed. The deduction is fixed. <clears throat> 30% of NAV. Whatever NAV you will get of this NAV, 30% fixed rate that will be allowed as standard deduction. That's it. Now, second deduction is interest on loan. So many points you have to remember while giving the deduction for interest on loan. So, <clears throat> remember these provisions because all these points we are going to come across there in the problems. First, interest on loan taken. <clears throat> First of all, rem remember, on any loan interest paid will not be allowed. <clears throat> For any loan taken by the SSC, interest paid will not be allowed. Only when the loan is taken to purchase the property, to construct the property, to repair the property, to renovate the property, to reconstruct the property. For these purposes, loan is taken, interest is paid, then only it will be allowed. If the loan is taken for any other purpose, other than these five, <coughs> interest paid will not be allowed as deduction. Right? This is the first point you have to remember. Interest paid on loan taken to purchase the house, to construct the house, to repair the house, to renovate the house, and to reconstruct the house. If the interest is paid in India, <coughs> If the interest is paid in India, then low interest on loan paid or outstanding fully allowed as reduction. If the loan is taken in India and interest is paid in India, then it will be fully allowed. If the loan is taken outside India from a foreign country, from a foreign country loan is taken, then Income Tax Act says interest paid will be allowed as reduction provided tax deducted at source. From that interest payment, first you deduct the TDS, net amount you paid to the foreigner, then only interest paid will be allowed. If TDS was not made, then deduction of interest on loan will not be allowed. Third one, interest on loan is allowed as deduction on due basis also. Even if it is not paid due, it will be allowed as reduction. Regarding interest, it is not compulsory that only payment will be allowed. Even if it is due but not paid, it will be allowed as deduction. Then if interest is paid for earlier period is not claimed as deduction. If interest on loan was not claimed in the earlier years, now that will not be allowed as deduction. Next one is interest on loan taken to purchase or acquire the property or to construct the house. Interest paid prior to the purchase. Sometimes. A loan is taken to purchase the property or to construct the property, but the property was not purchased, uh, the construction was not completed. The interest paid prior to purchase, prior to construct the property, 
that the interest paid will be allowed as deduction in five annual equal installment from the date when the construction was completed. Example. Suppose in the year 2020, the house was completed, construction completed and let out. But the loan was taken in 2015. <clears throat> in 2015, the loan was taken from bank. And from 2015 to 2020, during these five years, interest on loan was paid. Loan was taken to construct, but construction was completed in 2020. So any interest paid prior to the construction period, the total interest will be divided into five equal installments. And this will be allowed as reduction in five equal installments from the date when the construction is completed. That this point you have to remember. We'll come across this point while doing the problem. Then interest leading to the year of completion of construction can be fully claimed. So interest paid in the year of completion of construction will be fully allowed irrespective of the date when construction was completed. It is immaterial when the date when the date when the construction was completed, leave it. The year, full year interest will be allowed as deduction. Interest on interest, penal interest. What will happen if we do not pay the interest to the banker or to the lender, then what will happen? That person will charge penal interest. That the penal interest will not be allowed as reduction. Next one, brokerage or commission paid to raise the loan. Nowadays, directly it is uh, difficult to get the loan. So we take the help of a broker or a commission agent. The commission agent will help us in taking the loan. We have to pay the brokerage commission. That will not be allowed as deduction. All these points you have to remember because these will occur while doing the problem. Next, special note. From the assessment year 2002-2003 onwards, no deduction will be given for repairs, for insurance premium, for land revenue, for ground rent, etc. Earlier, before 2002-2003, many deductions are there from uh, under, deduction under section 24. Now you can see only two deductions are there. From when onwards these two deductions? 2002-2003 onwards till now only two deductions but before 2002-2003 many deductions were there example repairs or ground rent or land revenue or insurance premium or collection charges so many deductions now in the coming problem you will come across repairs incurred or collection charges or insurance premium just ignore and write in working note, all these deductions are not allowed presently. Composite rent. Sometimes the owner of the property will give some facilities to the tenant along with the property. Like lift maintenance, watchman salary, water, electricity bill. All these facilities will be given by the owner to the tenant. For providing these facilities, some charges are made. That means the landlord, the owner is not only charging the rent of the house, but also charging for the facilities provided. Then it is called a composite rent. In that composite rent, if it is separable, then rent of the house will be charged under income from house property. And the charges for facilities provided, that will be chargeable to tax under income from other sources. <coughs> Income from other sources. But if facilities are clubbed, that means we cannot separate. We cannot separate the income from house property and charges. Then in that case, the complete income from rent and charges that will be taxable under income from other sources, not under income from house property. If it is inseparable. If it is separable, then house rent, income from house property, charges, other charges made, income from other sources. That's it. Next, municipal tax. <clears throat> Some points you have to remember regarding municipal taxes <coughs> deduction. From gross annual value, municipal taxes will be deducted. So what are the provisions given for municipal taxes? Now I am going to explain you. If municipal taxes are due but not paid, then due amount is not allowed as deduction. First point, remember. 
municipal taxes will be allowed as reduction only on payment basis if it is due no deduction whereas in case of interest in case of interest on loan whether it is due or paid or due or paid fully allowed paid or due completely allowed in case of interest whereas municipal taxes will be allowed as deduction only if it is paid due not allowed next arrears of municipal taxes paid in the relevant previous year to the current assessment year is to be deducted from assessment from GAV arrears of municipal taxes for example last year municipal taxes was not paid not paid current year we have paid the municipal taxes of last year and current year for both the year municipal taxes are paid so income tax taxes complete payment of municipal taxes will be allowed as deduction from GAV that means last year municipal taxes current year municipal combined together will be allowed as deduction next one municipal taxes paid by tenant will not be allowed very very important if in the agreement rental deed agreement it is given that municipal taxes will be borne by the tenant in that case income tax act says municipal taxes will not be allowed as deduction only if municipal taxes paid by the owner then only it will be allowed as deduction then municipal taxes paid in advance is not allowed as deduction in the year of payment but it is allowed as deduction in the year for which the payment is to be made if municipal taxes are paid in advance not allowed for example current to previous year we have paid the municipal taxes for next year also for coming year also we have paid during the current year income tax act says advance municipal taxes paid will not be allowed as deduction in the current year huh, that amount will be allowed as deduction in the next year next one interest on loan taken to pay municipal taxes is not allowed as deduction interest paid on loan taken to purchase the house to construct the house to repair the house to renovate the house or to reconstruct the house will be allowed but if loan is taken to pay the municipal taxes interest paid will not be allowed next if the house or building is situated in a foreign country and local taxes paid by the SSC then these taxes are deducted from GAV whether the house is located in India or the house is situated outside India if municipal taxes are paid then it will be allowed as deduction whether the house is situated in India or abroad these are the points you have to remember for municipal taxes so in these two videos I have explained you about the provisions of income tax act regarding computing the income from house property inshallah in the from the next video onwards i'll start the problems on computation of income from house property so if you are satisfied give a like to the video share my channel give your comment subscribe my channel if you have not yet subscribed and by the super thanks which is given below my video inshallah we'll continue our discussion in the next video we'll start the problems in the next video